Hello and welcome to new and returning viewers. Today I'm taking a look at rituals for self-care. Are you looking to live a more joyful, peaceful life? Making some changes in your life? Then rituals for self-care can give you some great ideas. On the back they say, live with intention, purpose, and clarity, and harness the power of ritual to help you get there. Here are 50 rituals designed for everyday life, inspired by ancient traditions, chosen and followed by you. Where you place your attention matters. Choose mindfully and you will manifest the life you want. In an upcoming video, I'll be talking about 21 rituals to change your life. Another way of saying that is 21 mindful routines. In this case, it could be rituals for mindful routines. Unlike 21 rituals, which are very easy to incorporate into your life and cost zero dollars other than the purchase of the book, which provides information on each routine, the benefits that you can gain, along with great quotes to keep you motivated and inspired. The rituals for self-care vary in time and cost as there are different things to purchase depending on which ones you choose to do. Both books have a great way of making a difference in your life. As my shirt says, dreams don't work unless you do. So keeping in mind that Having a positive mindset is certainly the first step. Energy follows intention, so where we're focusing our thoughts is where things are going to flow and move. And, of course, taking care of yourself before you're trying to take care of everyone and everything else is the key. In order to be available and present when we're doing other activities, we have to remember to recharge ourselves, keep ourselves in a good place and a positive frame of mind, and most of all, setting ourselves up for success. So being clear on where it is you're moving to, what goals are important to you and will bring you happiness and joy finding things that make your heart sing and live a contented life. There are a number of great ideas in this book. The first page caught my attention and I'll be mentioning more about this in 21 Rituals because she used the same quote. Any ritual is an opportunity for transformation. That quote is by Starhawk, a well-known pagan author who I have found very inspiring. She's also an environmental activist, so there are a number of things that I truly appreciate about that particular author. And it is lovely to see her being recognized in not one, but two different books outside of the pagan community. Another point that I wanted to mention, and this ties in with keeping your own energy high, is that if you're running low, you're not available and you can't take care of other people as effectively. That made me think of the fish philosophy, which I've mentioned a few times. If you've seen my bulletin board video, then you're aware that I have therefore sayings in mind. And fish philosophy is based on men who work in a fish market in Seattle, Washington. I'm mentioning them because so often people will say they're either not in a job they love they're finding it difficult at work because sadly not all teens are as happy and thrilled to be at work as these gentlemen are. The important point I'd like to make there is whatever job you're currently doing, whether it makes your heart sing or it's just the good enough job to pay the bills until you reach the goals you're moving towards, remember whatever you're doing is important. It plays a role in this bigger global world that we're all in. So if you work at a coffee shop, remember when those customers are coming in, a smile 
and a bit of cheer will go a long way because you're not sure of what's going on with them as they come up to the counter. Equally, maybe you're sitting in a boardroom or a classroom or an office. Every job that someone does is of benefit to someone else. If you're a cleaner, having a clean place that the other people are coming to work in is important. And hopefully they say thank you and appreciate the job that you do. Even if people aren't appreciative and thanking you for the job you do, remember, the biggest cheerleader you have is yourself. So be sure to give yourself a pat on the back, thank yourself for a job well done, and continue to set yourself up for success and feeling positive. In the case of rituals for self-care, one of the rituals in this particular book is to create a vision board. And as I mentioned, I just did my bulletin board to help keep me on track, as well as my career and confidence board in terms of moving forward. I'll leave a card, I never remember where it shows up, to each of those videos above, if you haven't seen them already. In this book, we start with what the activity is. There's a short description of what it will do. So with the vision board, if you can see it, you can be it. Creating a visual manifestation of all you want to attract into your life brings it a little closer each day. And I have to say, with my career in confidence board, it's interesting how things have unfolded since I completed that board. So yes, it does work. For each activity, we have what you're trying to do. So manifest, in this case, it's manifestation. It gives you a time period. They have two hours. My board actually took me a bit longer because I worked through the book that came with that particular kit, working out the goals, where I wanted to go, what I already had in place, and then choosing the pictures and words that I wanted to create the board. Other people may actually want to do this on technology. There are a number of programs out there where you can either have mind webs and set your goals up around it. You may want to find the pictures and words there. Other people are more creative and you can write out the words. You may have your own pictures that you want to use. The key here is to have fun and be realistic. Set things on your board or document that are going to keep you motivated. You could even set this up as your screensaver on a phone. There's a suggestion of when to do it, so whether that's the morning, the evening, as soon as possible, and they also have what you'll need to complete the activity. So in this case, they have cork or poster board, scissors, and magazines which at one time would have been so much easier to find. But as I say, you can do this using your computer, find your pictures, find a font that you enjoy. So you're not just limited to doing this on a cork board. Do what's going to make sense for you and is easy to do and motivating. Next, they talk about the benefits of doing the activity. So, of course, with creating this board, it's making you aware of the goals, directions that you're moving towards. And it's a nice visual reminder of this is where I want to be heading in my life. Next, they have steps and instructions on how to do the activity. And at the bottom of each page for all 50 activities is an affirmation. So if you're someone who uses affirmations regularly, this book is a great purchase because it gives you five wonderful affirmations and you could even incorporate those into your, in this case, vision board. Or if you have other boards, as I do with my bulletin board, you could write some of those affirmations out and put them up there. And then each ritual also has a lovely photograph with it. I definitely recommend giving this book a try. As always, I say check your public library first to see if it's something that may be of interest or benefit to you. Another great activity 
particularly now when many of us are remembering loved ones who are not here to share the season and the holidays with us, is to do a shrine to a loved one. And again, this is something that you make unique for you. It may be a shelf on a bookcase. You may have another special place. And you set up the pictures and different things that remind you of that individual and honor your grief as well. One thing that I very much want to mention with this, they talk about diffuse orange essential oil to help uplift the spirits. Personally, I would not use orange. I do agree that it uplifts uplift spirits and for many people that would work but this is where I stress you really need to be mindful and do what's going to work best for you in my case orange reminds me of my maternal grandmother who wore orange blossom perfume no she and I were not close that smell does not uplift or inspire me So although I like a lot of the other ideas that they have with this shrine, I would choose a different essential oil. I'm pointing that out because as you read different things, again, check in with what's going to work best for you. In other words, for things to be effective, it doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly the way these authors have things set out. Tweak them and make them your own so that they will work effectively for you. Now, in the case of the shrine, they have 49 days, and this is a ceremony to say goodbye and work through and honor your grief. I would say, again, do what's going to make sense for you. I have different places in my home where I have little memories for my fur kids who we have had to say goodbye to over the years. And so when I look at them, it's a reminder of the wonderful times that we had, the memories that we share, and it brings me comfort. So maybe you would like to keep this up in the same way to honor and recognize someone. The affirmation that they have here is, I allow myself to feel this fully, to be here. I am patient with my healing process. To me, that is very important, and everyone moves through grief differently at their own time. So again, honor yourself, Honor your process and find and do things that are going to help you through that. It may be talking to other people. It may be setting up this little shrine. You may want to even journal or write about the person or situation that you're missing. And I want to stress that as well. When it comes to grief, people tend to think of loved ones, human or fur. But we don't just grieve when we've lost someone close to us. We grieve when we change jobs. Whether we love that job or despised it, it's still a big change in our life. We grieve when relationships end. Not just partners, but friends come and go through our life, sometimes because of a difficulty, sometimes because we've just grown and changed. So I want to stress that this shrine could be to whatever it is you're grieving about. It may be a loved one. It may be a situation. You need to think about what it is going on in your life right now and is there something that you need to say goodbye to in a certain way and whatever it is that you're grieving and working through will determine how you decide to set this up and what items you include on it. The important thing is be patient with yourself, honor the feelings that you're having, don't just stuff them inside or push them away, work through those feelings. Everyone, although they talk about the steps of grief, you move through them at different paces. You may go back to a step, you may jump a few steps, and it also takes a different amount of time for different people. Bottom line, honor yourself, move through your grief in the time that it 
personally takes you and makes sense for you. Another great suggestion in this book is on page 30, and this is Morning Pages for Creativity and Clarity. And this comes from Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way, another book that I will be talking about. And I've actually done Julia Cameron's 12-week program twice, and I highly recommend if you haven't given that a try. With morning pages, the idea is that you have three pages of paper, and in this particular case, they have to be paper, and you have either a pen or a pencil, whatever you're more comfortable writing with, and you're not worried about spelling, you're not worried about penmanship, The idea in this case is first thing in the morning, you're just stream of consciousness writing whatever pops into your head and you fill up those three pages. Like a journal, these are just for you. And the idea is as you're writing, you're unloading from your brain and down the road, you may look back at the pages to see maybe are there things to work on. Again, looking at your progress, how much easier it gets over time. And there's a much more detailed description about morning pages in Julia Cameron's work, as I say, The Artist's Way, and she also has a website. So I'll put her name down below if you want to check into her work a bit more. The affirmation in this case is, there is no right or wrong I'm open to everything my inner self has to say. So this is about listening to what's coming from the inside, whether it's about what you're focused on, what you need to clean up, what you need to tweak. I mention this because for some people this may work, and I actually did give it a try throughout the 12 weeks that I did the program the first time. For me, I prefer... My other type of journaling, which is just unloading my brain and consciously getting things out. And I do that typically at night when the day is ended so that I don't have busy brain as I'm trying to get to sleep. So for me, the morning pages weren't necessarily something that worked as they're written out and the way that Julia recommends doing them. But I'm mentioning them because they may work for some other people. And again, it's about tweaking and fine-tuning so you have an idea. I've journaled for decades, so when I came across Morning Pages, it was interesting. I decided to give it a try, but what I find is my other style of journaling works better for me. The last example that I'm going to mention is Create Christmas Cheer. And since it's December, it's a great time to talk about this. The duration, of course, is as long as you need. When you do it is the festive season. What you'll need is a creative spark. There are a number of us who have noticed that during this particular season, it has become all about commercialism, purchasing, maxing out your credit card, and that really has turned so many of us off what this season is. Is So many people have forgotten that this is about the birth of Jesus Christ, not Santa Claus, and how much stuff you can cram under your tree, because sadly a lot of that stuff is going to end up going back to the store, and some of it, even more sadly, into landfill because it can't be resold. So to me, this definitely spoke volumes, because I enjoy making Handmade gifts, I love to receive handmade gifts. A number of years ago, I received a beautiful lavender candle from someone. If you've seen my videos when I'm sitting in my chair in the living room, that blanket that sits behind me was a gift from a friend that she knitted for me. Those are the things that I really enjoy. Yes, I have other gifts and I appreciate them as much. There's just something about a homemade gift because you know the person who has made it and giving it to you has taken the time to think about what you would enjoy, what you would appreciate, and then they took their own time to make that gift. Whether it's a scarf, 
whatever it is that they've created for you. The other key part to this, and it's mentioned, of course, in this book, the key is giving something of yourself, your time, and your attention. So it isn't just someone who went running through a store, went, oh yeah, I bet they'd like that, and then up to the cash register and all of that. And again, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of amazing gifts that you can purchase. But when you're giving something that you have personally made, as it says here, you're giving the gift of your time because you took that time to make that gift, whether it's, again, something you've knitted, maybe you've baked someone some cookies or a cake, what have you. It's just a different type of giving. The other thing that I really enjoy about this is it isn't just for Christmas. It could be for birthdays. It could be for anniversaries. It could be just to let a friend know you're thinking about them and appreciate them. In other words, the gift isn't being given because there's a day on the calendar that tells you this is the day to honor and recognize someone. It could be any day of the year. Family, friend, co-worker, maybe somebody that you know just needs a little perk. And if you're one of those crafty people or you bake or you cook, then sharing that and with something that you've made. So you're giving them an item and your time. I really can't stress enough how much that means. Now, again, be mindful of who you're giving the gift to because for some people, they're all about the name brand, the store it came from. But there are so many other people who would really appreciate. Maybe it's a, a cupcake that you've made or you make a cake and, and share it with your entire staff team. The ideas and the creativity in this case are truly endless, and it's something that isn't just limited to Christmas. It can be any day of the year. So those are just a few of the ideas from Rituals for Self-Care and things that you can do for yourself and, in the case of this gift-giving, share with other people as well. I found this book to be a great resource with a number of wonderful ideas. Unlike 21 Rituals to Change Your Life, which is a program to do for 21 days and make some changes, Rituals for Self-Care is more a book that you pick up when you need some inspiration, different ideas, and as I say, it's beautifully laid out with the activity. It gives you all the steps and things that you need. There are beautiful pictures with it. So it really is a wonderful addition to your library of self-care, self-talk, and personal motivation. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give that like button a little tickle. If you're still here, be sure to give me a smiley face or a happy face in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoy content of a bookish nature, nature videos, or silly cat videos, be sure to turn on that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload content that may be of interest to you. Until next time, remember, you are enough, be kind to yourself, and we'll chat soon.